Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial looking at making some backgrounds and styles using the equation filter. Now I will freely put my hands up and admit that I know absolutely nothing about equations and mathematics and what have you like that. Um, so I don't fully understand the equation filter. And these are just a couple of things which I've sort of found out through sort of mucking about a little bit and I just want to pass them on. Though obviously you can go more in depth if you know more about equations and mathematics. Now basically it's making two types of background. You can make this sort of circular one or you can make this sort of one coming out from the center and sort of sort of star bursting out sort of effect. Um, so these are the, the types of backgrounds that you can make and you could use them with sort of like um, where is it? Trust me, there we go. So I've got this picture of the girl from pixabay.com and I've just cut her out and put my background behind her just to sort of give that effect. But you can also then make these into styles. Now the styles are on the, there's a style tab here and, and as you can see I've set up a new category which I've called equation filters and I've already made quite a few and I've used them in setting up this bit of text here each using a different style and that starburst one is in the C there um, which is style number one um, so there's two ways of using this effect either as a background or a style so what I'm going to do is first off I just want to say that all these styles that I've made are from my own pictures so I'm not sort of mucking up anybody else's pictures from Pixabay or what have you um, so in that respect when I do put these online which I haven't done yet because I haven't finished making them but when I do put these online for download you're free to do whatever you like with them they were from my pictures so I don't care how you use them so you know you can do whatever you want with them now one thing I will say is you if you're going to pick a picture which is this is the picture I'm going to use um, the more colorful it is the more colors that are in it the better the effect will be so if you've only got like a, like a yellow flower on a green background the only sort of effect you're going to be is yellow and green I've not practiced on this particular image so I've no idea how it will come out but obviously there's going to be some red streaks and blue streaks and hopefully these lights will give me some good effects so I'm just going to shut down some of these other Im images and then I will be back. Right, okay, I have shut down some of the images that I don't need. And I'd just like to, before I do jump in, is just to go over a few things. If you are going to make styles from these, you're best if you make a new category. And you can do that by clicking on this little sort of menu here. And... Um, add styles cat category that will add a new styles category which will be named I can't, I can't remember of hand what it's called but it's something fairly bland so then you'd have to come back to the menu and rename that category and that will give you a blank space here and it is into this space that these new styles will be made now one thing that is slightly confusing when making styles is if you right click the layer for example um, hang on, let's make sure I'm on the move menu and it is somewhere here to help it. Oh, if I just right click the image it says create style so if I come to the style menu and I'll do that again if you click on that it will not create a style from the image quite why they allow this menu option to be sort of unblanked out or to be blanked out I should say so you know that you can't use it I really don't know um, you I think you can also do that from the 
layers menu. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Uh, but if, let's never hit near that there. Um, so, although it looks like you can create a style from the image, you can't. You have to do it a different way, and I will get to that a bit later. So, let's get on and start using the equation filter. So, you come to filters and down to distort, and the equation filter is the last one in the menu. So when it opens up, it will be by default on the Cartesian option, which I have no idea how that works. I think this is where you really do need to know your equations and mathematics. If you go for the polar, because at the moment you can see it's like X and Y. If you click on polar, that changes to R and T. Now what I've found is if you can put three numbers in the R and it will get rid of the R and I can pick any three numbers you like. I'm going to go with five, seven, one. So that gives you that streaking effect coming out from the middle. But if you don't like that, you can pick a different set of numbers, a one, zero, nine, and you get a different effect. So I would suggest you experiment until you get something that you like so let me try 666 six, six. so that one's not so bad so it's trying different number combinations and I have sort of found that it doesn't seem to really matter too much about the maybe the last number and possibly the second number it's the first number that sort of denotes how these are going to work out but like I said I don't fully understand it so I quite like that one, so I'm going to click apply. So now I'm going to save this or export it. And as you can see, these are the ones I've saved already. And it will sort of, you can change the name, but at the moment it's got the name that I had for that particular picture. So I'm just going to change the end of it slightly and call that. EQ for equation. So this will be one of the backgrounds. So I'm going to save that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just open this picture again. I mean, I probably could go back to back to the beginning. Oh yeah, I'll just bring the history slider back to the um, start position, and I will go back and do the filter again. So distort and equation polar. And this time I'm going to use the T option which will give me the round image. Again I'll just highlight the T. And this time you can put in I think it's about five or six numbers. So I'll start with a three and at whatever point that you like the look of so, I mean, that's not so bad. That's just, just using two numbers, three and four. That's quite effective. And I'll try another one, six, seven. See how many numbers I can get in. All right. All right. At some point, yeah, it won't let me go any further than that. So it's quite a few. How many numbers are there? It's two, four, six, eight. About 13 numbers there. So I must admit, I quite liked the very first one I did, which was just two numbers, three and four. So I'm going to apply that. And then, as you can see, at the moment, I've got some blank corners here. So I'm just going to fill those in by adding a new layer, a new pixel layer. I'm going to drag that layer below. And I'm going to flood fill that with a color. Now I'm going to pick a color from this image here. So I'll just come over to this eyedropper here, click and hold, drag it out. And what color do we not have a lot of? We don't have much of this sort of yellowy color. So let's try that in there. Let's try that. Make 
just click on this now to make that the color click on the background and it will fill in those spaces that we're missing you could also add some noise to that bit of filter noise add noise and just add a little bit of noise click a pie just to give a bit of texture to that color I'm happy with that so I'm now going to export this and this was United Reformed Church and I'm going to call this EQ2 and then save so that is making two different backgrounds from that one picture so I can now close this and now I'm going to make some styles to add to the 16 that I've got there already so I'm going to need a new file so I'll click file and new and the size sort of doesn't matter as such but um, you could make it the size of the original photograph or just I've, I'm making it 210 by 210 millimeters and so once you have this open again you can't just plonk the background image on there and make styles out of it first of all what you need to do is to get the rectangle tool and make that the size of your background then come to the gradient tool and then up the top here where it says type solid if you click on the drop down menu come to bitmap and then navigate to your image so the first one is the you know the first one I did and that will f fill up this area and as you can see it hasn't filled it up quite completely because the size of the images don't match but if I click and drag this upwards we will stretch it out and fill it in better now to make sure you keep this in a straight line you need to hold down the shift key while you do this and then just click and make that bigger and obviously if your document is smaller or what have you you won't need to do that but so once you have this how you want it then you can right click and create style you just have to wait a bit while it does that and that style has now been added into there I mean you could sort of tinker with this a bit you know, move it around and make us you know all sorts of different weird and wacky shapes and make styles out of that but I'm, I'm not going to do that but what I will do is I'll come back to this menu click on bitmap and pick the second one which was the circles so again it, you can tinker with this in fact what I will do is I'm going to just bring this in so the center is in the corners there bring this one in so the center is in the corner the center of that circle and those circles are pretty much in the corner and then right click create a style wait a little bit and that next one will be added and then I'll just again hold down the shift key and bring these out to the edges so I've got just the one circle and then again right click create style so from that one image of a church I've meant I've got two different types of background and I've got three different styles and obviously you could go back and make all sorts of different designs using different colors and different numbers as you put them in the equation filter you may not have a vast amount of use for say the styles and backgrounds but it is also something handy to know and may give you some sort of extra features that you didn't know you had 
So basically that is it. And uh, thank you for watching. And goodbye. Now I must apologise there. I've just gone to tack something on the end. Um, because I forgot to mention how you use the styles. For people who have never used them before. You can use them sort of on shapes or sort of text. So let me just pick a shape. Let's go with one. Well, let's try the heart tool. And let's just make that like that. And then I'll do a bit of text. So let's go with... like that so you've got the text or the shape so you come to your styles tab and you can just highlight one letter and let's go with the ones I've made just now now I did make a, an extra one after I stopped making that video I just made one with lots of different circles so we'll try that one first you have got all these little circles there so start the highlight the next letter Add the starburst there let's try that one, and that's a good. That was not so bad. And the last one, um, no, nope. I'll leave it at that. And then when it comes to the shape, again, just highlight it, and then you can click on a style and fill the shape with whichever style that you want to add into it so basically that is how you can use the styles once you've made them so finally this is the end thank you for watching and goodbye